Okay, we're going to look at uh, ancient Greek art. Uh, many of you know that, uh, but some don't, that all of these alabaster looking white paintings are depictions on the wall and indeed all the sculptures and things too were actually painted at one time and uh, vibrant colors and so through looking in little chips that are left inside their hair they were able to recreate different colors going on it even the skin wasn't done to an alabaster white but a more Caucasian to tan type of appearance that you see normally and so this is the goddess Aphrodite we're just gonna go through a few of these here but so a bright green headdress on what looks to be a strawberry blonde hair blue eyes even a blushing they noted on their cheeks these are professionally done if you notice the headdress had a swastika motif in it Here's Alexander the Great and what colors depicted on him. Most people think of him in a later date as having darker hair, but quite often people that have a golden blonde or a dirty blonde hair will darken as it gets older and get more of a chestnut look. Also, they noted that his eyes are a blue-green color, but in reality, it's even said in the ancients that he had one blue eye and the other one was either green or brown and that signified that he was half divinity and so that blue eyes goes along with that but they're showing here here with green eyes so he would have eyes like David Bowie or something you know where he had two different colored eyes so here we look and this is like Athena or Nike and when we start to color it in, we realize that it's green. And let me see if you can see a fairy here. What do you see? Do you see a fairy? Or do you see an angel? Oh, angels are only, oh yeah, only, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does this look more like a fairy or an angel? Uh, I believe this is Pericles. A little bright there. Let's see if we can get it to come in. And Pericles was a redhead. Well defined. Makes you wonder whenever they show a lot of these Greek things, why don't they show a lot of this blonde and red hair that's going to show through this? He had brown eyes, but let's look at this one. Not sure who exactly this is. Could have been Alexander. Looks like he has a blue and green eye. Blonde hair. Gold band around it. Somewhat curly hair. It's a definite incredible depiction. Good depictions. We still marvel at the Greeks ability to make a real lifelike statue. Whenever everything else before like the Egyptians and so on were doing a boss relief. But they kept doing that boss relief over time these people started to take and actually pull a person out of that stone see there where they fixed her nose it was chopped off I think they did a pretty good job with it let's look at Ares this is the god of war so his skin colors in a little bit quite the buff guy he's got a helmet headdress later they'll show you one where the headdress right there where it meets has swastika symbology also this is a carotid column. These are actual columns that are just like columns, except for they carve them out to be deities. Quite often they'll have this thing on top of their head, and just like a woman carrying a jug is helping to hold up the whole temple. I used to have some of my D&D &D campaign, and they would come to life and this one thing we went through, it was kind of like going back to ancient Crete where they had to talk to carotid columns. Whenever they did, it colored up 
and then it came to life and started talking to them, but it didn't move very much. But when they got them excited, it started moving and it started crumbling and dust was all coming down and they had to realize, hey, don't get them riled up. You need certain information and all you really need to know is who did this and who took the special thing away. Wish I'd had a uh, illustration like this to use at that point to give the people an idea for right now you're going to see one come to life in the colors that it was. And so you see auburn hair, again a green blouse, blue eyes, and a golden sashing holding it all together in this modus type head that she had it on it quite elaborate very sultanish how about Hermes you know we know him as the FTD florist but I swear that looks very elven doesn't it reddish hair blue eyes you're gonna see that quite common just like you see it in Samaria and the ancient Egyptians it's very common for these were the people that were the ruling class and gods of them all. What is this color into? Hmm, she has kind of a faraway look in her eyes. Blue eyes again and a blue dress. This is that Egyptian blue. I'm going to do a video here uh, that I looked into something recently where they said they think they're thinking somehow that people couldn't see blue and so on. I'm, that's kind of a farce way of looking at things. I'll have to describe that. And this is Dionysus. Oh yeah, that golden warrior, blue eyes. Dionysus. Long hair of youth and so on. What do sphinxes look like when you call her on? Uh, you know, the sphinx of Egypt, the sphinx that connects its Greeks and all those together. Uh, common symbology that these Caucasians have. Wow, that's quite elaborate. Makes you wonder if the other one was ever painted at one time. And they said that the Pharaoh's head and everything was, of course, painted at one time, but thinking that a lot of it was, just like the Egyptian temples were all painted. Who's got a white horse? Quite a few people. Even centaurs? What do they look like? Well, it's a blonde guy fighting you. Got a knee up, and then pow, boy, he's hitting him. <laughs> but he's redheaded and Looked like he had green eyes. Isn't that odd? But they were horsemen. And so this connotation in mythology comes out of that. Blonde hair, red hair. Were they all red hair? Well, no, but the Greeks talk about it kind of like they were to a point that there was extreme exaggeration. Here's a Greek right here. Even red pubes, ladies. And uh, they note it. Yeah, they look and they say, there, there's colors all in here. In fact, look how elaborate this one gets, for these are some ladies laying around. And what you think was just some alabaster sculpture comes to life quite a bit more whenever they had them painted like they did in the elder days. Look at this big hunk of a guy. Blonde hair, greenish blue eyes it looked like there. And they noted differences and stuff, and it's put on a color wheel. And so here we have again a carroted column. Not painted so much. And what to do with this? Well, it has kind of a brownish chestnut hair, and green eyes. These statues look a lot more alive whenever you do them like that. But whenever you leave them gray, it looks like turned to stone that these people of old that we all talk about how somehow like Medusa had been turned to stone but even they themselves had them painted in this manner look at the snake symbology going on with this I'm not sure who this is I think it's Caligula or Caesar they have different forms of it here and Look how elaborate that was. And so we look at certain symbology here that's on it in a close-up. And you can see a light bearer and he has a dog. There's also a man with a dog here coming. And you have an eagle being held up on a perch. 
and if you look at it closely this is the belt of Orion being held aloft and if we look up a little further what's going on with the heavens and so on well you know this has nothing to do with the Bible supposedly but if I was to tell you this is angels these are the, this is the sign of the four horsemen this is God holding up the sky and everything that's that's it you know, yeah yeah I see that uh-huh well guess who the four horsemen were and then Titus later rode in on a white horse and all these people had an angel thing going on for I've shown you that goes back way way before these times even we're looking at now but look how elaborately this was painted up you know you think of how long the paint lasts on your house how long does the Mona Lisa last well how long would it last if it was out in the weather and you can kind of see the remnants on the left and here's a recreation on the right and for what I understand what they did was they made an exact replica of that statue and then painted it with the colors that they detected off of it and are showing you this is what it looked like so they didn't take the old statue and paint it back up I've heard somebody really get mad about that it's not what's happening here they just made an exact replica and then are painting it with the old colors that are detected in the other shot It has green eyes, kind of a chestnut hair, a little reddish tinge to it. They look a lot more alive when you have them like that. Let's look at some of these fabrics. Isn't that amazing? It's almost a sequence of a fish or peacock feathers. Well, look at some of these designs that are cut into it too, and how elaborate that chest collar was and we look at this it's fringed by snakes fringed by snakes look at this pattern as we zoom in on it and they didn't finish this they didn't maybe they didn't get the hair color off of this or so on they just left it at that but they could get all the other colors I showed this in a video last year but here's this Phrygian type archer Peloponnesian type archer that they had in the elaborate colors that they have that reminds one of a Christmas sweater nowadays look how colorful that was and of course we look over here and we can see a dove of hope and we're all familiar with that symbology but yeah isn't that got to do with the Noah and bringing the twig back and the thing that goes with everything oh yeah it's definitely it does well this is at a time before uh, and what as I'm telling you a lot of this goes back from way back machine Look at these leggings and things. My wife gets some real odd ones and these cool designs and stuff, and I swear she'd be happy to have something like this. She's got some Halloween ones that are just outrageous and stuff, but look at some of these designs on here and the snake symbology and the lion, horsemen, and we know about where horses come from and things nowadays, and so that it, how that had already affected them. There's a sphinx. Lions? Oh yeah, there's lions. There's a blue-eyed lion for a strange reason. Isn't that odd? You look into the eyes of these people and you see people that you recognize still to this day. Some of these designs coming right at you are swastika forms. Look at this and coming right at you if I could stop it at the right time. There's some four-leaf clovers. It's a type of design. It sure is lucky. Or maybe it has a lot more to do with skill than luck. Look at how this is double fringe colored. The designs that are on to it. She has blonde hair. It's a little different than the yellow of her background and sash. Swastikas. Ting, 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 ting. We've talked a lot about that and where that actually comes from and the extent of where it goes and that it wasn't just some group of freakouts from World War II but let's go on and look at this so we've seen a whole lot of brown haired auburn haired blonde haired type people their swastik is there on that base right there at the bottom here again is the full shot of that other one 
how elaborately painted these are. Redhead with red eyes. A lot of people say, well, that's Inanna. You know, well, that's Diana. So, it's weird to look at all this alabaster statues, but you can take and look real closely at it. And they got their equipment and got in close, and they go, there's some flicks of paint still left here. And what color was it? They had these greenish-brown eyes. They were shaped moon-shaped. That's Caliglia, I think. Again, here we're looking at a depiction of Alexander the Great, white horse, very symbolic. Look at what's all colored up, and blue eyes, and really starts to stand things off. Again, centaurs, and we've talked about where that comes from, but colorized. It's just like colorizing a movie, it sure does give it more life and realism than they had had in these ancient days, even painting them themselves. The Parthenon, all of these different ones, there's Egyptian blue again. That blue shows up under ultraviolet light. It glows in the dark almost like a black light poster. I've shown you last year, recently, a video about it. Look at the colorization here. So it's marvelous. Two blondes and a redhead. So there sure hasn't been, well, now there's starting to be quite a few duplicates, and there are some fresh coming up, but. We haven't seen too many brown heads, and we sure haven't seen any blackhead people. Well, that will come in time. But you look at the percentage of people, and here we go again. The way they look. And tell me now if you're a Greek person or you've been to Greece, if you think that this is the ratio that's going on there today that was going on in ancient times. A lot, th a lot of things have changed. <clears throat> it's amazing to see these things come to life like this. Aphrodite, goddesses, green eyes, golden blonde hair. Greek warriors again. I don't know who this is. Ajax, somebody. Oh, I'm sure somebody figure it out. It just won't come to my mind. They're far too many, aren't there? Here we have a chestnut brown auburn type of hair. But if you look, there's all types of animals and things that are all depicted here. And one would think, though this looks like a Christmas sweater or a Christmas dress, it indeed might have gone towards that time. But the symbology that goes in there actually has to do and go with all of that too certainly are the colors aren't they and the style almost still has that effect look at something like Venus statue and how colored up it was the different colors they use blonde hair look at this one would unmistakably unmistakably look at that and say this was it's got to be a statue of Mary right no no it could be an elf and queen couldn't it or it could be one of the ancient Greek statues because this thing predates all of that by far it's got a little tiara thing on her head that strangely looks like some type of maybe even oriental pagoda or umbrella but yet mm, that's a halo type thing too isn't it this was gilded in gold here we see some of the ancient Minoans and just like the Greeks the Mitanni the Etruscans and all these guys around here they would show fishermen and workers and stuff getting well tanned as they would but also other people of being quite pale and their women pale you can see this in Egypt exactly the same symbology people have a confusion about that and we all you look at it here and you aren't confused about it but all these frescoes they had dolphins are very symbolic with them too 
red-headed people here too. While there is an extreme amount of dark hairiness in their photography here, you do see some redheads there also. Well, when we look at Egypt, it had a lot of dark-haired people and wigs that the people had, but whenever you look into it, there were a whole lot more blonde and blue-haired people. And in fact, if you look at the earliest dynasties, there's those crystal blue eyes that I've showed. You can just look up blue-eyed Egyptians and then start clicking on them. Or reserve heads and so on. It's the earliest of dynasties, so there is no qualm about how that all went down, of course. Here we see these steely blue-gray inset eyes on a bronze-skinned young Grecian and they've taken a piece that's very similar to a Parthenon inset that would have all been up there and recolored it back to the colors that it had going on so it's more flesh tones but look at the amount of elaborate coloring here and they notice that the whole background is the background of the sky and so it's blue and if you look, it's almost a hair more blue than the sky background. Some references are to gray. Well, the sky can be hazy and gray, but it's blue. This is blue. Hey, there's an angel over here. And he's hanging around with a lion. But she's petting. So I got pet lions and stuff. And then he's holding the world in his hand. His sun god. And people can't put things together. This is Mary and... Never mind. Oh, very top of that Parthenon. Just a glitch back, see if I can catch it right. Coming out of this pick. So we see those lotus blossom palm frond effects, but can you make out that there's swastikas below on a rim on everywhere down through there? Look at the amount of colorization and stuff that's done up under here too. So this was all professionally painted quite well. Look, here's a red burning bush. I think it's amazing to find out, well, A, that we can detect the color off of them and pull it like that, but also that these statues themselves, that's Caligula, were painted. Hey, red-headed, kind of like David. Maybe a statue of a Nana on the left. She's known to be a redhead and have red eyes. And you'll see some of that. Oopsie. Here we have swastikas too. And red and blue and gold and green. White background on it. And these star symbols are what we see in Sumeria and quite a few places. And that amazing connection. One could wonder what this lady's doing. She's just giving her daughter a hug. She's showing off this brand new clothes that she made. Look how pretty. She's showing off her daughter and saying, look at my daughter. She's so pretty. She's prettier than the goddess that is herself. Oh, no, no, no. You don't want to do that. I've heard that went bad once. Let's continue. So you see this Minerva type thing and how it would really look colored up. You see this statue. In, this is, of course, black and white photograph from old and Stuff, and what did she look like naturally? Here. Something like a simple vase on a wall has that much symbology. Here again is the dove. A lot of this has Etruscan looks into it, and there's a reason for that too. We've gone into Etruscan art and this same symbology, and women who look like this, and Fatica and how that all goes together. This is actually the front of a sphinx, but it's done in the guise of Inanna or Diana and the red eyes. She said that she would turn red-eyed. When we think about the oracle of the sphinx and that idea too that goes along with it. Are you gonna get the color out of this? That's just an amazing sculpture. That had a lot of feeling in that sculpture there. They find these ancient paintings on the wall that are just about gone, and they were able to re-vibrant them, I guess, or whatever. You know how you can take in Photoshop and take the amount of color and crank it up? It's similar to that, but done a whole lot better. Look at her red eyes. 
I know her nose is chipped off. That happens to everybody's statues. Look how colorful. Like a jester. It's amazing. It has monkeys and lions and things all over it. Phrygian caps. Here we are again with that same concept. If these aren't all just Greeks. I mean, we've been flipping around in Minoans and Etruscan art all over into the edge of the Middle East and so on. For the Carthaginians and North Africans have their own, and the uh, Egyptians have their own. But in the Egyptians' case, we can quite often see a lot of it because it was trapped into tombs that were perhaps never to be seen again. Oh, whoopsie. Here's some more of those swastika designs under that. Oh, wait, that's that same urn, another picture of it. But look at the amount of colorization. You look at this and you go, well, they used to have it painted. And you were like, really? Well, what did it look like? Here's a recreation sitting right next to it showing you this is what it looked like. And they can't get the bottom quite of it and stuff, but they got everything else. I think it's amazing kind of takes away from it everybody looks and they say oh they used to be just alabaster statues they left plain like that they go no they were colored up they were definitely colored up this is how they look this is how they look this Alexander with the golden fleece on the back of it funny how his eyes look kind of grassy or something I don't know what the effect is there Lion's head mask. Real colorful. Early paintings. This isn't a cracked up fresco. This is an actual painting. People. And he's wearing a purple tunic and things going on. But here's a girl with purple hair. No, no, that's a guy with short short hair. That person is wearing a purple tunic too. It's going into Phoenicians and stuff. Wait, this one's carrying a cross right here. What's up? Uh, uh, uh. So a lot of them look like this, and they can enhance it, but then some of the other ones, they can pull out and look at the colorations that they've got on this. Quite amazing. Here again are those brassy, bronzed eyes. Look at this ideal here. It looks a lot like the depiction that you'll see whenever you see Alexander the Great fight taking on Darius the Persians, who are Arians also, of course. You look here and you go, okay, well, he would have had yellow, golden uh, hair, and certain people are dressed. Other ones are not dressed as much. There's a guy with red hair going down. Here's one of these guys with that stockings that looks like he would have been one of those archer types that was going on. And you wonder what his hand up is. Well, there's a hole in the socket there. They used to actually put a real spear through there. Some folklore says that there used to be a spear that was gold and people kept stealing it or it got stolen over time. So then they put a bronze one through there but still wrapped in gold foil or something like that. You should have this spear and it's from there. Again, the white horse symbology. I still say that it looked Christmassy. Look at this. It's like a peacock. Scales of a multicolored fish, very iridescent, super colored. Swastiki, 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 and all around that. Mausoleums, and I wish they would have had a depiction of up close of some of the pictures around on this, but don't. Tuppins for the birds. Vases. One of the only brown haired guys we've seen so far. Another one on the wall, more colored in. It's another blonde. That lion there. Blue mane on a lion. Perhaps that has more symbology than, than you know. Snakes on her coat. A 
Athena. That's Caligula, right? So everybody said, oh, he does all, you look at him and you're like, maybe they exaggerated quite a bit after the fact to try to justify the situation. Look how colorful some of these are, though. And the, the dress on that one, if they go down and look at the dress on that one, chestnut hair, little leggings there, a pulled back bow, the fringe of a cuff. Swastiki, swastiki. Elves? There's the first one I've seen with what you would call dark brown or black hair out of all of them. Of course, there was a group of them that all went like this and they painted each one differently, so... I'm willing to go with. They checked all their hair in each one of them, and this one had the darkest hair onto it. You see a lot of that increase now, but that could have been a lot from the Romans, which seem to have more of that in them. But we've looked at some Roman art, the ancient part right here, and it says something different about it, too. In fact, look at that fresco and the color of hair of that person in blonde, blonde, brown. Yeah, surprise you to know that dove right there is enough from the Middle East. A lot of these depictions are, and stories, of course, and where these people came from. And we have a depiction of a sun god type. And oh, this is the taking of Persephone. Is this the, the yeah, this is it taking into the underworld? Typhon, the red eyed, the red haired god. This blonde girl cowling here. I'd like to see that in a redone effect. There's another person here. There's a great story that goes along with that. It's like a white horse again. There's that blue eyed lion. Look how colorful. So all these statues, some of which were golden gilded, and other ones had like this. And another interesting effect they had was that a lot of these arms and elbows were a different, totally different piece made, and it looks like they could pose them almost like a Ken doll and get them in different situations, you know, like a Barbie or a Ken doll. Here again is that elaborate shoulder piece, which had the snakes all going around it. It's amazing they haven't been broken off by anybody through this. It's, you know, people have been. The headdress on that last one, though, again shows swastikas. This is Archer. Some of these statues, they would actually dress and put actual dress parts on them. Sometimes actual helmets. Again, say that's not Mary. Look at that face and the amount of colorization on that. Even stick figures that look like pre-dynastic Egypt, but you can still see the color in some of these, but a lot of them it was just caught in the wrinkles in a few places, but here we can distinctly see that it's red. Here she has a red headband and it looks like blondish type hair. But with their equipment they can get in and say, no, they, she had green eyes or blue eyes or whatever and delicate colorations. Some of them it's just real evident like that. Other ones you'd look at and you'd go, that was never colored. Hey, yeah, it was quite a bit. It has this chestnut deep red hair. Redheads, auburn, chestnut, auburn, goldenish eyed, steely blue, bronze skin, blue eyed. Super amount of colors here. A lot more than you would have ever thought. Look at the ass on that. She's holding a cricket. Who's that? It's the bronze statue of Minerva. 
can see the segmented arm in there. Look at this. Elfin type wear. Huh. That's a terrible picture. Again. Swa, 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 swa. Swa all over the crazy. And that's on that one that we've been looking at a couple of times. Recoloration for him. And here's the one in yellow. And again. Swa, 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 swa. Red and blue. Red, white, and blue. Gold. Red, blue, green. Red haired. It's amazing. Even the bottom is trimmed with swastikas. Just like this vase is. There was a fresco of a statue. Well, one could imagine as marvelous as they were, that would happen. Hey, here's Mithra in his Phrygian cap, his red cape, his gold gilded skin on his hand too, stabbing in a Taurus, like we've talked about videos, and we're coming back up on that same time of year where we come through the Torrid Meteor Shower, and they appear to emanate from right in this direction, as the blood spurting out, and here's the snake symbolizing that, but if you look at his tail, he kind of turns into a comet space thing. What's up with all that? Well, uh, there's always a dog. There's always these other things. Look here, there's a chariot being pulled and a cherubim and an angel. That's not these people. Yeah, yeah, I, it damn well is. All of it is. All of it is. In fact, here's the four horsemen pulling in again. Like, here he is. There he does his thing. So the sun comes through, does his thing. Minoans again with that symbolic art. Males in red ochre, females kept pale. Symbology. You're able to do that, well, I guess with Caucasians, as long as you have farming and everything going on real good and the women don't have to toil and they can actually be the mothers of the kids and so on like that and hang out in temples and all kinds of things. Yeah, there's a lot of pictures of that uh, archer there, but uh, man, look at the outlining of these things and how these amazing pictures look at there's Jesus type somebody looks Sargon type Caligula there we go there's some weird symbology for there's that one we're talking about and I finally get a side view of it she's wearing the snake part on it but better yet even the headdress is made of a snake holding up the crest like a mohawk and that is nothing but swastikas going through it they don't have her hair colored or anything but you can bet and she's colored up like a peacock huh y'all realize this surely there's some that didn't know these things were colored up like this these are all recreations that are done steely blue eyed blonde bronze if you will. Hera and different people. There's Memnon, his redhead, but everybody's a redhead right here. One, two, three. No, that one's blood. There's a Medusa face. We'll keep going on. This is the famous story from their battle that goes on here, and the four horsemen that goes on. That was very Inanna ish. Again, we have that same type of symbology here, but that first one was. A sphinx. So coming to the end of it here, you can see people colored up. Here again is the drawing depiction of that one that we saw in real life, redone up before they had finished it. And here it is, redone. And I think we'll finish with that one right there. That's one of the more elaborate ones little picture forms all over it. People have always seen the bronze thing, so you imagine his bronze chest plate with all of this type stuff on it, and there's that, there's that cherubim right down there too, and it's holding on to his cuff. Like, share, subscribe, and enjoy, and we'll get on to more of that amazing history. Peace.
You ever notice how the cuffs right here seem to look like the puff cuffs later times Shakespeare and stuff?